Hello, everyone. Good morning or afternoon, wherever you may be joining us. Thank you for joining our webinar presented by Sekisui SPR Americas. My name is Ryan Schallenberger, and I will be moderating this event. This presentation will cover a recent spiral wound pipe rehabilitation project completed in Fulton County, Georgia. Our presenter today is Chris Lind, and I'll give a quick bio on Chris before we begin. Chris is the regional manager for Sekisui SPR Americas for the Eastern United States. He has over 12 years of industry experience working with manufacturers, distributors, and contractors specializing in pump technology and trenchless pipeline rehabilitation. He is a current member of NASCO and NAST and is presented at regional conferences. Now, before we begin, we have a quick introduction to Sekisui SPR and some webinar housekeeping items. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Sekisui SPR Americas, we offer innovative trenchless pipe rehabilitation solutions for gravity pipe applications, and these span from six inches in diameter to over 200 inches in diameter. Our headquarters are in Atlanta, Georgia, and we provide our pipe rehab technology throughout the entire United States. We encourage you to check out our website and videos after the presentation to learn even more about spiral wound liners, and we can also be contacted through our website. Let's move on to some details about the webinar. This will be a 20 to 25 minute presentation with a total of 15 minutes for question and answer after the presentation. Please write in your questions at any point and we'll quickly cover how to do so. In this picture, you can see there is a portal to ask questions. Simply click on ask a question to do so. If this portal is not visible, click the symbol where the red arrow is pointing. This should make the Q&A window available. Again, please ask your questions at any point during this presentation. And with that, I'll pass it over to Chris Lynn. Thank you, Ryan, and thanks to all of you for taking time for our webinar today. Sekisui SPR's fully structural spiral wound pipeline rehabilitation products offer municipalities, agencies, designers, and engineers an alternative to traditional trenchless rehabilitation methods. It is another tool to be used when a project presents challenges where other methods for rehabilitation could be needed. In this case, the Fulton County Department of Public Works in Georgia was presented with such a challenge. Through the assessment of their current systems, they identified line segments that needed rehabilitation. The 42 and 60 inch lines totaling nearly a little over 1500 feet need to be addressed due to the conditions that you see here. Cracks in the lines of lead infiltration, difficult locations for dig and replace, and constant high flow at high velocity. As you can see from this overview, these reinforced concrete pipes are located along a major road at Riverside Drive, but also run under a trail, the parking lot of a church, and a local park while also bordering the Chattahoochee River. Sekisui SPR Southeast Regional Installer, Ruby Collins Incorporated out of Smyrna, Georgia, was selected by the general contractor, Kemi Construction, to perform this project. Before we move on to the details of this project, including the steps it took to complete it, we should talk about why the Sekisui SPR spiral wound products were selected. With over 4 million feet installed in the United States for nearly 30 years, spiral wound liners for rehabilitation are not a new technology. Spiral wound liners are capable of rehabilitating gravity sanitary sewer, storm drain, and culvert pipelines. Mechanical installation equipment placed inside of the host pipe winds the manufactured PVC material within the host pipe. Each liner is designed to form a fully structural solution. Sekisui SPR offers three different products to cover a range of round and non-round pipelines with varying diameters. In the case of the Fulton County project, two of our products, SPR TF and SPR, were used to complete the rehabilitation project. We will discuss the products later in the presentation. 
let's talk briefly about the spiral wound process. All our spiral wound liner products utilize a specialized winding machine to form our liners. Each machine is specific to the diameter and shape of the hose pipe. The machines can be locked into position to form the liner, which we call static winding, or the machine can travel inside the pipe to create the liner, which we call traverse winding. Finally, the machine that is used allows the liner to be a tight fit against the hose pipe or leaves an annular space that, that will be filled with the grout. The decision of whether to use a tight fit or grouted solution will be discussed later in the presentation. The PVC profile strip that you see in the picture is manufactured so that upon installation, a continuously sealed spiral joint is formed. The machinery in our factory fabricates these strips and is sent to our installers on spools for installation in the field. When the application for your project demands it, the pro profile strip can be reinforced with steel at the factory so that additional work does not have to be done in the field. The spool that arrives in the field to our installers is mounted on hydraulically powered spool skates, allowing the profile to be fed directly into the manhole where the winding machinery is positioned to form the liner. With the completion of the installation of the liner, grounding of the annular space when necessary, reinstating any lateral connections, and sealing each end of the liner, you can expect that you will have a completely sealed, fully structural pipe that is able to stand up to all loading without benefit from the hose pipe for a minimum service life of 50 years. Let's talk about some of the features of the spiral wound liners. First, despite the cross-sectional loss that can vary based on the pipe diameter and the material selected, the smooth surface of the PVC profile will provide hydraulic efficiencies that match or exceed the current flow characteristics of the deteriorated hose pipe. The PVC profile manufactured by our factories in Japan, Australia, and the Netherlands serves as the building blocks for all of our spiral wound rehabilitation products. The compounds used in the PVC profile meet the minimum cell classifications, corrosion, and chemical resistance testing within ASTM F1697-18 and the corrosion resistant requirements for, from additional agencies such as the Green Book uh, from California. All our PVC profiles are manufactured in configurations that create mechanical locks for our spiral wound systems. The mechanical locks of the PVC profile are then enhanced with sealing materials that when compressed by the locks form a watertight structure. That lock integrity has been tested by third par party laboratories worldwide. The installed liner is designed for a minimum of 50 year service life. And in those instances where seismic activity can be an issue, additional testing has been done to ensure that the structure of the liner remains. With all these features, agencies like Fulton County can expect to see the following benefits. The spiral wound rehabilitation process is unique in that installations can be conducted when live flow is moving through the existing pipeline. Based on the diameter of the pipe, lining can be done with low velocity flows up to 30% of the hose pipe capacity. This can help reduce costs associated with bypassing of lines, either by eliminating it or reducing its scope. The various equipment used for installation of our spiral wound liners all share the same footprint. The equipment is lowered through the existing manhole or access points to the invert of the pipe. The material is fed from spools above the manhole to the lining equipment. Therefore, no additional excavation is needed as the winding equipment can be taken apart and put back together at the invert of the manhole, making the entire installation process truly trenchless. The spiral wound installation process is fully mechanical. Our PVC profile is manufactured under con controlled conditions within a factory. Once set up, the winding equipment creates a structurally uniform liner that is not impacted by site conditions. And since no chemicals or thermal processes are used to install the liner, there are no wait times associated to finalize the installation process. As a fully mechanical process, should unexpected events occur during the lining, 
the installation can be paused, the event addressed, then lining can continue. Even if that event is a lengthy rainstorm that raises normal flow above allowable lining levels. Finally, when an agency or designer is considering the environmental impact of a project, the spiral wound process delivers a product that is environmentally friendly with a minimum impact on traffic and normal normal day to day operations within a project site, including the ability to access remote sites that would normally require temporary site excavation. Now that we've covered the basics of the spiral wound process and its features and benefits, let's talk more about the Fulton County Georgia project. As you remember from the beginning of the presentation, the Fulton County was faced with the rehabilitation of 42 and 60 inch line segments. After considering other options, the county selected spiral wound rehabilitation. To meet their requirements, Sakasui and Ruby Collins used the following products to complete the project. For the 42 inch pipe, the SPRTF method was used. Based on loading conditions and conditions of the hose pipe, this tight fit solution offered Fulton County a fully structural liner without the need for grouting. For the 60 inch pipe, the SPR method was selected and a 54 inch liner was designed to meet the requirements of this pipeline. The SPR method creates a fully structural liner that requires annular space grouting between the hose pipe and the liner. Because the 54 inch liner design met the fully deteriorated standard under ASTM F1741-18, a cellular grout was selected for the annular space to act as a means of load transfer between the host pipe and the liner. When grout is required in a spiral wound application, bracing of the liner and the use of grout supports must be considered. In the case of the Fulton County project, a simple bracing method of vertical supports were installed to hold the liner in place while grout was introduced into the annular space. That vertical brace model is what you see on the right hand side of the picture uh, in this slide. While ensuring that the grout head has filled the annular space, grout ports are installed throughout the liner. Those grout ports are in the animation on the left. So essentially when grout is introduced into the annular space, uh, when grout exits the port and water stops coming out of the ports themselves, they're capped off until the final elevation and the final lifts of the entire annular space have been grouted. And all this grouting is based and installed on the design requirements of the liner and the application itself. With all this considered and, pro and the product selected, Ruby Collins moved on to the installation and completion of the rehabilitation project. One of the first challenges associated with this project was the proximity of the lines to the Chattahoochee River. As we discussed earlier, the spiral wound process can be accomplished with low velocity flows up to 30% of the hose pipe capacity. In the case of this project, a modified bypass was installed that allowed some flow to continue. While some delays to lining did occur due to rain events, when it was necessary to allow all flows to move through the pipe, that being the normal flow, as well as the increased flow from the rainwater events. Once the flows were under control, Ruby Collins crews were able to line the 1100 feet of this 60 inch pipe. These pictures that you see here in the slide represent from left to right, the size of the manhole that the crew was working with, the actual equipment and liner being formed inside of the hose pipe, along with the above ground spool, feed the material to the lining crew in the pipeline. Once the 60 inch pipe was complete, it was time to move on to the 42 inch pipe, which offered some additional challenges. The first was that it was Rubicon's initial opportunity to install the SPRTF product. Due to travel restrictions under COVID-19 and faced with a deadline for completion of the project, Sekisui and Ruby Collins made the arrangements for a virtual training specific to this installation process to occur. 
Despite the absence of an in-person trainer, Rubicons was able to complete the online training in one week and move on to the lining of the pipe. With a little over 400 linear feet of pipe rehabilitated, So perhaps the best way to sum up this project would be to see some live footage from the job site. Well, that will end the presentation portion of our webinar. Let's move on to providing the answers to some of your questions. A few questions we had come in uh, through the uh, live Q&A uh, was there was a few, so let's go ahead and we'll get some of those answers uh, for you guys. Uh, the first question was what uh, ground strength is required? Uh, and our answer to that is that uh, the strength of the ground is basically determined uh, in combination with the strength of the liner the loading conditions on the host pipe condition and oftentimes a engineer will be the ones who will provide the strength of the grout that's required. Uh, once the strength of that grout is uh, determined, uh, then we'll recommend the type of bracing system necessary for the lined system should be grout be required for those types of uh, applications. The second question uh, was whether or not the tight fit system relies on the strength of the hose pipe. Uh, and in all cases, uh, we strive to design our liners to ASTM F1741-18. Uh, this ASTM and the design that meets those standards basically means that we will have a pipe that can stand up to all the loading conditions, hydraulic and otherwise, as if it's a standalone pipe. Uh, thereby relying on the hose pipe for no contribution to the strength of the overall rehabilitated line. Uh, there was a question directly related to the project itself, uh, and that was how long did each portion of the project take? Uh, and uh, each portion of the project were inter interesting in this respect is that because they were delayed uh, because of rainwater conditions and things of that nature. So, um, each uh, project probably took no more than two to three weeks of actual winding and grouting itself. Uh, however, uh, be, due to weather conditions, uh, allowing uh, the bypass to be shut down so full flows could proceed through the pipelines, Mother Nature did have an effect uh, on us uh, for those uh, particular uh, applications. 
there was also uh, another question related to uh, the maximum internal pressure uh, of our liners themselves. And our liners themselves are actually uh, for gravity sewer applications only, both for sewer and stormwater applications. So uh, we, do, we do not market uh, the product as a um, actual uh, uh, pressure pipe system, strictly gravity only. Uh, the uh, we just had a question come in re relative to knowing how many feet can be installed per day with both methods uh, and that is really a function of the uh, size of the pipe that's being rehabilitated the shape of the pipe that's being rehabilitated uh, as well as the uh, depth uh, at which it's being rehabilitated as well uh, we know that in some cases uh, pipelines have, uh, have been rehabilitated in one day uh, we know that in some cases pipe, pipelines have taken uh, months uh, to actually uh, go ahead and be installed. So how many feet per day can be directly addressed by knowing the diameter of the host pipe and our installer experience uh, in order to uh, determine just how fast per day uh, they can actually install uh, any of our liners. Uh, we had a question also regarding uh, cleaning required prior to installation. Uh, what we do is we consider uh, light cleaning to be uh, the normal uh, mode of cleaning for spiral wound rehabilitation. Uh, in terms of heavy cleaning um, or breaking out uh, bid items for a particular project, uh, the heavy cleaning would def definitely be related to things uh, that can't be removed from normal light cleaning. Uh, and uh, in many cases, uh, our installers will identify that which is normal cleaning uh, and those things that require additional cleaning or, or a second or third pass uh, to bring a, a pipe to lineable cleaning levels. Uh, they will oftentimes break that out as part of their uh, estimate for a particular project. Uh, there was a specific question regarding this, uh, the pipeline uh, the 42 inch pipeline. Uh, the question was actually why was the hose pipe not clean prior to installation? Uh, and based on the assessment of the pipeline itself, uh, the condition of the hose pipe, um, our installer Ruby Collins determined uh, that the liner could be installed, form a tight fit, and actually uh, do so without having to do any type of cleaning to remove a lot of the heavy sediment uh, that was seen uh, in the video itself. So I hope that answers the question about that particular thing. Um, another question just came in uh, relative to uh, how are the laterals connected uh, within our systems. Uh, all of our laterals are reconnected either via uh, robotic uh, and camera uh, reinstatement by actually cutting out uh, the uh, laterals and sealing them with a lateral sealing device after the product has been, after the line has been done. For larger diameter manned entry style installations, those will actually physically be cut out internally as well uh, and then sealed uh, prior to grouting occurring within that particular pipeline. Uh, that looks like um, we had a lot of those qu immediate questions answered. Uh, we had a few more questions that, that came up during the presentation that we'll take the time to uh, follow up with everybody uh, regarding answers for those. Uh, so if there's no more questions that uh, we can see here, uh, then what I would very much like to do is thank everyone uh, for taking the time out of their schedules uh, for our presentation. Uh, please do check our website uh, for additional information about our products. And certainly by all means on our website, if you have additional requests or if we can help you with any additional uh, rehabilitation uh, recommendations, uh, please do uh, contact us via our website. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.